a winter of discontent is coming for the United Kingdom. Today, the first in what will be weeks of nationwide strikes began across multiple professions, from ambulance crews to border officers, all in protest of skyrocketing living costs. And as the days get colder, many are faced with a terrible choice, heat the home or feed the family. From Whitehawk, one of the poorest districts of Brighton on the south coast, special correspondent Malcolm Brabant reports. Sue Meachin is cooking up 300 hearty meals. Her kitchen is in the vanguard of the fight against hunger in this social housing complex and beyond, as millions of Britons are forced to cut back on life's essentials, food and warmth. 100% it's cooked with love. And it's made for these people that really, really are what I call the forgotten people. People don't care about them, but we do. And that's the main thing. You taste it, mother. Hi, <laughs> <Like> Grandma. <laughs> Janet Cronin's non-profit provides home deliveries because the local authority can no longer afford to run the service. What's your assessment of how bad the cost of living crisis is? Pretty bad. It's dire. There's just so many things. You can't even have your heating on. You've got to be careful. Do I eat? Do I put the heating on? And I'm the same. Like, I haven't got my heating on that much. Food price rises have been the sharpest they've been for more than 40 years. And this element of inflation hits the poorest hardest because, proportionately, they spend more of their income on food than the better off. Single mother Natasha Bell is heading for a handout. Once a music business executive, she fell on hard times and into the red. A non-profit, Christians Against Poverty, helped to get debt collectors off her back. Despite working part-time, Bell is reliant on food banks and the advice of debt coach Neil Avard. You've got two kids, is that right? Two. two one's kids. 11 and one's 14. Yeah, yeah. How do you see things like you know, Christmas coming up? To be fair, I'm dreading it. How desperate would you say the situation is? I can't even imagine how some of these people survive week to week. We could always blame the economic situation, we can blame the war in Europe. Uh, they're not going to go away anytime soon. I've just popped in to get a couple yeah. of bits, if that's all right. Of course it is. I mean... Just yeah. the basics. Natasha Bell isn't alone. A recent survey showed that if most working Britons lost their jobs, they would survive financially for only 19 days. Demand for food banks is up 40% this year, and many are struggling because donations are down. What does it feel like, sort of, going to a food bank? Embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Uh, when I first started going, I'd be in a queue and kind of like looking at the floor because I didn't really want anyone to see me. And then I realised that quite a lot of people I know have started using the food bank. It's not quite so embarrassing and I don't, I don't care anymore that people know I go to a food bank. What sort of difference does it make to you? Really big difference. Like your real kind of staples, like, you know, pasta, washing powder, washing up liquid, bleach, shower gel. They shouldn't really be luxuries, but they are... That's the sort of kind of, like, basic stuff that they give me. It's not like they're giving away lobster or foie gras. It isn't just the poor who are drowning. Those in the middle-income bracket are running faster to stand still or even go backwards. Britain's recent financial turbulence pushed mortgage interest rates to their highest level in 14 years. I think a lot of families are genuinely terrified. If they're looking at increases of you know, over $1,000 per month, UK equivalent, then I think they just can't find that money and they don't know where they're going to find it from. Sam Murphy's consultancy is called Mortgage Medics, but in this climate there's no available cure. The typical mortgage payment might be about $2,500 per month. And a lot of people, when they're coming to the end of their deals at the moment, they're looking at their payments going up by 40, 50, 60 per cent, some even as much as doubling. As he tried to balance Britain's books, Treasury Chief Jeremy Hunt targeted middle income and wealthier households with the highest taxes since World War II, fully aware that his budget would send living standards plunging to record lows. There is a global energy crisis, a global inflation crisis and a global economic crisis. But the British people are tough, inventive and resourceful. Some of the $67 billion hole in Britain's finances was created by the fiscal mismanagement of Conservative Premier Liz Truss, kicked out after just six weeks. The cost of government borrowing and imports shot up, but there's another significant reason why there's a shortfall. Britain's decision to leave the European Union, its biggest trading partner. Independent empirical work suggests that as a result of Brexit, UK GDP is of the order of 3 to 5% lower than it would have been otherwise. Professor Michael Gaziorek is director of the UK Trade Policy Observatory. Economically, we are taking a hit. 
and there's no doubt that we are taking a hit, but there are political reasons for wanting to make that decision, which is to do with sovereignty. So it becomes a trade-off. Recent suggestions that Britain might seek a closer relationship with Europe have been dismissed by Rishi Sunak, the country's third prime minister, in the past six months. I believe in Brexit, and I know that Brexit can deliver, and is already delivering, enormous benefits and opportunities for the country. I think Britain's very broken. I think it's a banana republic. It's not all about business. and business. It's not this trickle-down. It doesn't trickle to anywhere. It trickles into the yacht or holiday or a speedboat. So I don't know. It's not trickling down to, you know, us having, like, a fantastic kitchen. To serve people like former bodybuilder and window cleaner Dave Blythe, whose leg was amputated four years ago because of a blocked artery. The meals he receives keep him from joining more than a million British seniors said to be wasting away because of hunger. It is fairly depressing where I've worked all my life to actually rely on people to give you food. It, it, it doesn't make you feel too good. The Kitchen's co-founder, Brian Coyle, has launched a nationwide campaign to compel local authorities to fund meal deliveries to the vulnerable. So we give two pallets. There you go. We've now got a situation in England where over a million, uh, over 65 year olds in this country are suffering from no nutrition. It's quite a shocking statistic in a country as rich as the United Kingdom. Hi, Dave. Here's your dinner. Here's your dinner, Dave. We've got beautiful, we have got beautiful raspberries today. Lovely. Thanks we'll very much. As well. yeah. Charles Sadler is collecting a food parcel for himself and six neighbours. I've been getting food here for quite a while. What would happen to you if you didn't get this meal? I mean, what sort of difference does it make to you? Well, it stops you from going hungry. But I'm blessed, OK? Across town, debt coach Neil Avard is delivering a welfare package to someone who's housebound. He believes many people have cut back right to the bone. You can budget and get your, your expenditure right down. But I'm now coming to a point where I'm finding... Actually, no, you're, you're, you're in negative expenditure and you've cut down in or cut back on everything. Um, and that, that's going to be a big problem unless the government steps in with more help for people, you know, with heating grants and food grants and things like that. In the words of Britain's Institute for Fiscal Studies, the country is in for a long, hard, unpleasant journey made more arduous by a series of economic blunders. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Malcolm Brabant in Brighton.